Hello everyone, hello again. Uh, today again we are going to talk about 20th century English poetry. Um, it is part three, as you remember in the first two parts we talked about symbolist poetry and war poetry. In this part we are going to talk about imagist poetry, imagism. We will analyze uh, several poems, we will give examples from some poems. These are the, the Embankment uh, and the Autumn by Hulme, the Return, the Encounter by Ezra Pound, and the Letter by Amy Lower. So let's start. First of all, we'll have a very short introduction to Imagism. So uh, I have, out, I have um, shown here some points. Um, so modernist, uh, what is Imagism? So first of all, let's talk about modernism. Modernists abandoned the traditional Victorian genre and created new ways of writings. So uh, in, in previous two videos, we talked about symbolism, war poetry. Now we talk about Imagism, which means that uh, before this uh, three, let's say, um, movements, three genres in poetry and literature, we had in 19th century, um, close to the, uh, to the beginning of 20th century, we had modernism, uh, sorry, we had Victorian uh, literature. It was old and traditional. So uh, poets, uh, artists, the writers got very bored with it and they tried to find new ways of writing, new genres, new movements in literature they created. So uh, what Imagism itself started in 1940, but already in 1908, pre-Imagism started at uh, sorry, in the Poets Club by Henry Simpson. Uh, so Hilm, the poet Hilm, was the first secretary of this club, and he presented certain rules of uh, certain rules for imagist poetry. The picture in the first uh, above is uh, this uh, picture above is Hilm, the poet. So he was the one who actually started uh, imagist poetry by writing his first poem, Autumn is the earliest example of Imagist poetry. So it was written in 1908, uh, the poem Autumn, it was written in 1908, and it's the first earliest eight, uh, examples of Imagist poetry. So what Imagism is short, is simple, it is focused, it is very direct to the point. The poets do not talk about the themes, but the image itself. They talk about the, uh, the, the main point, they don't try to describe it, they just give the certain idea and that's all. Um, Ezra Pound, the one uh, below the second picture uh, under Hilm's photo, uh, Ezra Pound gave three rules, directness of the thing, the thing means the subject, they called it the thing, the thing means the subject that they are writing, writing about, so directness of the thing, no irrelevant words and no rhythm. Uh, so they, one thing with me Victorian, uh, one thing with the modern uh, poets was that they uh, abandoned the old rhyming and rhyming scheme, the rhythm. They, uh, they tried to focus on the uh, work itself and they preferred to write in free verse. So in, in short, it should have uh, Imagist poem should have economic language, which means it should be short, it should be understandable and very straightforward. So it should also obey these three rules. It should be, um, uh, it should not be, uh, it should be direct. It should not be irrelevant, and it should be a free verse. Uh, like symbolism, imagines, Imagism also shortened poetry, so the idea was to shorten the poetry, unlike the Victorian poetry. Victorian poetry or realism was too long for, um, uh, for, um, uh, for uh, reading, let's say, but the images and the symbolists, they said that it should be short and very straightforward. Uh, another very important note is that Imagism was influenced by Japanese ha haiku poems. Uh, these are short and straight to the point poems. I will give you some examples of haiku poetry in the next slide. Haiku is only about nature, but Imagism has many themes. So yes, they were the poets of um, um, the poets of Imagist literature were influenced by the haiku poetry of Japanese literature. However, the Japanese haiku poetry talks about only nature, but uh, Imagism uh, talks about so many things, it has so many themes. 
Ezra Pound is considered the founder of Imagism, the, the, the second photo below. Uh, but Hilm was the one who started it. So Hilm started it with uh, the poem Autumn, as we earlier mentioned. But Ezra Pound was the one who uh, people think that was the, uh, let's say, um, starter of this, uh, was the founder of this poetry, but it was Hilm with his poem Autumn. And uh, another thing is that Ezra Pound described imagism as a vortex, as, as a vortex. Now I will, I will show you in the next slide uh, what is vortex and what is haiku poetry. Japanese haiku and vortex. Uh, so as you can see, short and straight to the point. So let's read this example. First day of spring, I keep thinking about the end of autumn. Usually there are just three lines. There are just three lines, the haiku poetry, the Japanese poetry, but it gives a lot of information. First day of spring, I keep thinking about the end of autumn. First day of spring is new life and then our end of autumn is the end of life. So it is very straight, very direct. So that is uh, what, uh, let's say, influenced the images poetry. And vortex, this is vortex. Uh, there is one single thing at the bottom and ideas grow on it. So you can see down below, it is very small uh, in the in the second photo. Down below, the water is very small, but then it gets bigger and bigger. So the images poetry focuses on, starts with a simple thing, but then they make it bigger and bigger. The idea gets larger and bigger. Okay, now let's talk about our first poem, Autumn by Hilm. It was written in 1908. It's a very short poem and I have uh, underlined, uh, highlighted some words in the poem. A touch of cold in the autumn night, I walked abroad. So here abroad means countryside. And so the ruddy moon lean over a hedge. Uh, a hedge, which, which means that the moon is lower, is down. As you can see in the photo, moon is down. It's new, uh, it's lower like a red-faced farmer. Red-faced means it is a full moon because when it's full moon, it is, it's red, the moon is red. I did not speak to speak. I did not stop to speak, but nodded, which means that he just saw the moon he, and he continued walking. He just admired the beauty of moon and he continued walking. He didn't say anything extra. And um, he says, and uh, around about the very wistful stars, Wistful stars here stand for the town children. Now, as we said, he is outside in a town, in a village, in a small place, outside the big city. Um, so he is uh, comparing the wistful stars uh, with the and the round about and round about the very the wistful stars with white faces like town children. So stars and children. He is comparing these two. It's a metaphor. Wistful stars stands for children. But the moon itself stands for uh, oldness, being old and mature. So stars are small, uh, symbolically they are small, but moon is, is large, it's bigger. Um, which means that uh, uh, the, the stars are not mature enough, but the moon is mature, is old, is big. So as you can see, this is very simple, very straightforward poem. It is the first and earliest example of um, Imagist poetry. Now let's go to the next one. The Embankment by Hilm. Again, it's another uh, poem that we are having here. Um, so we have, uh, we have, it's a fantasy of a fallen gentleman on a cold, bitter night, it says. Um, I will, um, so uh, as I, again, I have underlined, I have highlighted some words. Once in uh, finest of fiddles found I ecstasy. Um, so what he is trying to say that, uh, first of all, what does fallen gentleman mean? Gentleman stands for a rich man in the, let's say, Victorian uh, time. Uh, of course, this poem is, um, is a modern, uh, modern poem is Imagist poem, but we have a gentleman who is around, let's say, 40s, maybe a little bit older. So he is a, an, an, a traditional man. 
he is uh he was a gentleman he was a rich man but now he is poor he says that the ones in finest of fiddles are found by ecstasy so finest means the best the fine uh, fiddle means violin the musical instrument so it stands for parties uh, musical parties ecstasy means happiness so once in the past he used to have um let's say um uh, he used to go to concerts to parties he used to enjoy the life in the flash of gold hills on the hard pavement in the flash of flash means um let's say surrounded by gold hills gold hills stand for um let's say prostitutes um so uh in that time uh, uh only prostitutes could wear gold uh, high heels let's say so he says that he spent his time he's, he wasted his mo his money for uh, women uh and for uh let's say um uh un unuseful things he just wasted his mon money for his uh, for, for prostitution and then he says now i see it means now i understand that i did wrong the warmth the warmth the very stuff of poesy oh god make small the old star eaten blanket of the sky that i may fold in round me in comfort lie so what he is saying he says that um the only thing right now he needs is um he, he needs a blanket he doesn't have a blanket and he is and this the sky is his blanket but he needs a real blanket because it's cold for him in uh it's cold for him outside um uh, at night mm -hmm. so uh um, important notes here are um so it is more uh this poem is more imagist uh compared to autumn uh, the previous poem that we have talked about uh the word embankment stands for a street in london um it is said that this is a street that mostly poor people or um let's say homeless people live okay so uh very short very straightforward we have an we have a gentleman who is bankrupt who wasted his money when he was young for women for prostitution now he is um he is let's say mature but he is outside he understands his mistakes he's too poor that he has no money even for a blanket all right now let's let's move on to the next poem okay so our next poem is the encounter by ezra pound again it's a very short poem um it has only five lines i have highlighted the most important uh words in this poem so it says all the while they were talking the new morality her eyes explored me and when i rose to go her fingers were like the tissue of a japanese paper napkin so what does uh he's trying to say here uh, as i highlighted here all the while they were talking talking what so which means that there is a meeting going or or there is a conference or people are just sitting around and talking about something but what is this something the word near morality so it stands for near morality it stands for um the issues of the society the, the the most common issues of the society or the most common ideas the new ideas we talk about for example as, as we earlier said it's the end of uh, victorian age and it's the beginning of uh, modernism so people are supposed to leave the old victorian uh, ideas and they have to continue with new uh, ideas so um, because um, now people are discussing the new things in society the new issues the new problems the new ideas the new challenges that they have in society uh, they are trying to discuss all these things the morality stands for subjects problems issues everything in modern periods that people faced at the beginning the word explored means um, so not look but explore as if she dis uh, dissected him to see every single part of his body so she's not looking this is a, not a simple look but it is um, observing him she is cutting him into pieces and looking at him very carefully um, um, to see everything in his body 
um, so she is trying to she is observing him completely and then he wants to leave the man tries to leave but when he wants to leave um, she's touching him so he says that her fingers and Japanese napkin so there is a metaphor her fingers are so soft as the napkin as Japanese napkin uh, she is touching him and her touch is so soft so gentle okay so that's all about this poem it's very short and uh, it's very um, straightforward uh, now let's continue our next poem okay we talk about now the return by Ezra Pound it was written in 1913 so compared to many other images poems this is a very long poem um, so I wrote here the, uh, the notes that uh, the poem is about pagan gods the gods that existed before Christianity before uh, other main religions so um, as I again as before I have underlined I have highlighted some important verses such as slow fit uncertain one by one and uh, and, and more uh, now uh, as I said it's about pagan gods so what's happening first of all we can see that uh, see they return ah see the tentative movements and the slow feet the word slow feet the phrase slow feet stands that we see that people are coming but they are coming very slow they are not sure if they should come then it continues the trouble in the pace and the uncertain wavering so uh, they are coming but they are not sure if they should come back yet we don't know who are these people but we know that someone is coming back from somewhere and then it continues and say see they return one and uh, by one so it means that they are coming one by one uh, people are uh, entering slowly but they are scared it says with fear as half awakened as if the snow should hesitate so we have a very beautiful uh, metaphor here uh, when snow snows when it snows sometimes there is a wind and the snow goes right and left uh, it it waves in the in the sky the same thing happens with uh, he, he says that these people are hesitant they are hesitating as the snow hesitates to snow um, and then later in the uh, the third stanza it's it says now we have some as you can see we have some uh, hint here now we have in, in the first two stanzas we don't know what is happening but we know that some people are coming back from somewhere we don't know who are these people but then it says gods of the winged shoe so what does it mean now we understand that these are the gods not god but the gods now here we understand these are pagan gods these are the gods that existed before christianity or other main religions um, and then he says hey hey uh, in the uh, uh, fourth stanza so here here he is the the speaker is making fun of the gods he says that uh, they were once they were they were powerful before uh, before this uh, Christianity before Islam this these religions these pagan gods were powerful they were strong but what happened to these gods now they have no power left and they are even scared to come back um, so uh, and then uh, later at the last line at the last two lines slow on the leash pallet the leash man so what does it say here uh, he, he tries to say that he is comparing ma man and the gods and he says that we don't need any pagan gods uh, because men are cruel you know uh, the pagan gods are very so cruel they had so uh, rough rules um, they had very strange and horrifying rules to punish people and he is the speaker is says here that we actually don't need pagan gods to come back because we men are horrible we are the pagan gods we are ourselves are the pagan gods because we um, we destroy each other we destroy humanity all right so that's all about this poem um, now let's move to our uh, next and the last poem okay so this poem is about love it's actually about uh, writing a letter to a lover uh, 
The poet Amy Lowell, Amy Lowell describes uh, her longing for her lover in this paper. In this, um, but she is mostly describing the way that she is writing the letter, uh, the the let's say the process of writing. Uh, meanwhile, she is while writing, she is feeling some feelings and emotions. Now she is trying to show these feelings and emotions um, in in her poem. So it starts little cramped words scrolling all over the paper, like drag, uh, draggled flies' legs. So she's saying that she is writing, but her handwriting is so is so um, unreadable. It's not good, but it has a reason because she is longing for her lover, and because of her longs, because of her longing, because of her desire for her lover, um, she cannot write it good. So they just look like flies legs, you know, they are um, not uh, clear, they are messy as a fly's leg. And then she continues, what can you tell of the flooring moon through the oak leaves? So we know that it is night, she can see the moon from her window of our or of my uncertain uh, window and the bare floor spattered with moonlight so we know that there is no uh, we know that there is no curtain uh, the she, there is a window and the light of the moon the moonlight is inside the room that she is sitting and she's looking at the moonlight mm -hmm. okay so uh, we later she continues with words such as sorry later she continues your silly creaks and twists have nothing in them of blossoming half horns and this paper is dull crisp smooth virgin of loveliness beneath my heart hand so uh, the, the paper is under her hand she's trying to write but, but because she's too lonely that she is comparing her loneliness to the virginity she's so lonely that it is impossible to describe all these things and this paper is nothing compared to her lover it is better to see her lover in, in, in person, in reality, rather than seeing, rather than writing and feeling on a paper. She is longing, she is desiring her uh, lover. Later, she continues, I am tired, beloved, of chaffing my heart against the want of you, of squeezing it into little ink drops. She says she is tired, she has no power left. She has been waiting maybe for a long time or a short time, we don't know, but she is tired of waiting. Now we have a very beautiful metaphor here, squeezing it into little ink drops. It refers to the heart, so as if she is writing the letter with her own blood that is taken from, that is taken from her heart. She takes her heart out, she's squeezing the heart and then she's taking the pen, putting the pen in the blood and then putting it on paper and posting it and I scaled alone uh, and I scaled alone here under the fire of the great moon so fire means what uh, fire refers to all her desires you know sexual desire uh, emotional desire for love uh, she is uh, she is longing she is desiring her lover uh, so of the great moon great moon refers to the, to her beloved so the beloved is not there but uh, again she is um she is uh, in her imagination she is imagining that the, uh, the 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 lover is there okay uh so now a very quick uh, note about this um uh poem the the poem is about her love for a woman so Emmy Lowell, some uh, some people say that she was lesbian. So this is a lesbian love. She writes a letter to show how lonely and fragile she is without her lover. And the poem is written in the romantic genre style in imaginist spirit. So uh, again, if compared to other uh, uh, imaginist poems, this is a, a long poem. Uh, she is using a lot of romantic symbols such as moon, moonlight. And then we have window, etc. Uh, and then the feelings that she's describing. All this uh, ref uh, shows, uh, even the fly itself, flies legs. Uh, they show the uh, romantic symbols, 
but the spirit of the poem is uh, an imagist poem. All right, thank you so much for watching. That is all about uh, imagist poetry. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.